Hi everyone and welcome to Darlene's Creative Studio. The weather here in Canada has finally gotten nice and sunny and warm. Um, we spent the last couple of days outside walking and enjoying all the buds and flowers and spring. Um, so I've just been at night working on a couple of journals and I wanted to share three of the journals. I shall share four of the journals that I've just recently finished. Um, I've been working on my Reader's Digest series and these are some of the vintage journals covers from the 19, I'm going to say 50s or 60s, um, the covers. And I think I've explained before in a video, um, I bought them when I was in the U.S. at my son's. And I cut the covers off because all the spines were quite crispy and, and peeling off. So when I gutted the books, I cut the spines off and I just came home with the covers. Um, so I've created these spines using Nick the Booksmith's Scholar's Ledger's course. Um, she painted her fabric, but I just purchased um, fabric that looked a little bit um, old. Um, so this is black fabric, 100% cotton. And this is the Reader's Digest cover. And then I've used a book plate and printed out the word journal. I've used some um, ribbon um, and lace on the edges just to, to cover that edge of the fabric so that it doesn't fray. I've used a Tim Holtz um, little closure here. I think it's called a peg closure. Um, and they just screw in through the hole. And then some elastic to close it. So that's the one journal. They are approximately five by seven and a half. And they have a one and a half inch spine, or one and a quarter inch spine. Let me just double check that. One and a half inch spine. Um, and there's this one. And then I've also done, sorry, there's fluff everywhere because I was cutting fabric. Um, there's also this one, it's green with some butterflies on it. And I've used lace and the same fabrics. And with the book plate and the closure and the elastic. And then I've used this one as well. I really like this yellowy florally one. I've used some um, lace with some yellow in it and the fabric with the closure and the book plate. Now what I've done with these particular, these three, these have 140 pound watercolor paper in them. I wanted to make artist journals. I've been following a couple of people on Instagram and they've really inspired me to get back to my drawing. I like pen and ink and watercolor, so that's kind of where I've reverted back to. I want to try and do some more of that. So I decided to create these watercolor journals. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a pad of watercolor paper that she had on hand and she wasn't using. Um, so I've gone ahead and cut the paper up. So on the insides of these books, what I've done is I've added some paper on the inside cover. I've added this little pocket, these um, little envelopes that I've used for in here. These were from the 1950s. They have little floral inside the envelope. They had matching stationery. They're quite old and vintage. And I've just stamped it with a paintbrush here and then added my card in here. You can add your own card. And what I'm going to do is include, this is a sticker, a label, and it says this book belongs to, and I don't know if you can see it, but it has some bugs and butterflies. There's a bee there, I think that's a bee, and there's some little bugs there, but um, I've created these from a title page of an old vintage book. And you can add that there if you want to. I'm not going to stick it on in case the person does not want to use that, but I'm going to include one of those as well. On the front of each signature, and there are five signatures in this book, and I believe it ends up being about 160 pages. On each signature, I've covered each signature with vellum. While I was putting this together, I didn't want to mark the watercolor paper or damage it in any way, so I covered it with vellum. This is Japanese origami paper that a friend of mine gave me. Hi, Sharon. Um, and I just used some scraps to create a little cover with the vellum paper and the origami paper. So this is uh, one piece and this is another piece and then it has the vellum on top to protect it. And then each piece has the watercolor paper and I don't want to touch it too much. And then they're hand sewn inside. So there's hand stitch binding in each signature. And then each signature has the, and it does lay flat. Each signature has the vellum paper on it. Let me just double check the number of pages here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 16 times five is whatever. That's how many signatures, <laughs> I'll figure that out. But this is this particular one and each signature has the paper and the 
vellum on the front. And then in the back, I've used the other half of that little envelope and I've stamped um, with a brush and I'm just going to touch up these with my pen to make them look like the pin that was there. Anyway, I'll touch up this for you so that it will look exactly like the stamp. And I put a label here. And then what I've done is I've included a piece of the watercolor paper. And you can use this or put this inside for um, scrap pieces of watercolor paper that when you're doing a drawing and you want to test your colors, you can use that as well. So there's that. And then the closure is an elastic and I've got these little metal feet on the end of the elastic. So the elastic just pulls out if you want to change the closure, but the elastic just folds over and does that. So there's that particular journal. The green one with the butterflies has some beautiful pink paper in it with some butterflies and again the brushes with my business card. This one has a nice light blue origami paper with this is white with some sparkly little chunks in it and again it has the vellum page on each of the signatures. So there's eight and an eight, sixteen. So there's quite a few pages in each one. And again each signature has the light blue paper and the vellum just protects each signature and then on the back again we have the stamp with the sample of the watercolor paper and I will just insert that book this book belongs to and that one goes in there and then the this is um, a tree and it has some little cardinals in it and there's another little bush on the bottom so it's kind of a landscape picture and the closure is that and then I just used some more uh, scrapbooking paper in there with the my card in there and you can put your own card in there and you can have your this book belongs to and I've used a nice steely gray blue with some more of the white with the little flecks in it and again it has the vellum paper on the front of each and there's 8 and 16 double that 32 times 5 And again, it's 140 pound Canson acid free watercolor paper. And then at the back, again, it has the envelope with the stamp and your sample paper there. So that is what I've been working on. And I just want to show you the last journal that I've been working on. This is, let me just move these out of the way. This is mixed media paper. And what I've done is just use an old book cover. I went and grabbed, um, I believe it was a dictionary. It was an old book cover that I had in my closet and I've covered it with some scrapbooking cardstock paper. I've added the fabric to cover the spine that said dictionary on it. I've used some of that fabric that looks, this one's a little bit different. This, this one's a little black, more black. Um, and again, it has the closure. And this particular book is mixed media paper. And again, I've used the vellum and then just added a little bit of the scrapbooking paper there just to cover the paper so that it does not get marred when you're opening and closing it. And this is nine by seven. And then I've created a pocket in the front here, a three-tier pocket. And this is some of the watercolor paper. Mix, sorry, excuse me, mixed media paper, not watercolor paper. And I've used the Tim Holtz little peg closure. I have sewn the signatures in with using some fabric. And this one has five signatures. And then I've used some a variety of different papers. So this one, the second signature has this color. Then we've gone back to the brown. The creamy brown and then in the back I've added a little pocket here which you just open up the elastic there's a little envelope this has a little mixed media card page 
and that just sits inside there and then in the pocket I've also added just some scrap mixed media paper as well so you could add some of your you've got lots of room here to add lots of little scraps of your mixed media paper so that again you can test your colors or use it as scrap and then you just grab your ribbon and you wrap it around like that and again it has the elastic closure with the little feet and when you close it up it closes like that and this is a nice hefty they've got some weight to them because the paper is quite heavy and this is the mixed media paper that you can use pen and ink markers and you can use light watercolor on this as well and I believe it's the same cans and mixed media paper in this particular book as well. So that's what I've been working on. Um, I just wanted to finish up these art journals because I'm working on the denim series. I'm finishing those up. They take a little bit more time because I do a lot of stenciling on the pages and stamping on the pages and adding pockets and that kind of thing. So they take a little bit longer, but with the watercolor paper in the mixed media paper, it's just a matter of folding and cutting and then, you know, putting the covers on the signatures and then sewing them in. So they take a lot of work, but they're just, um, I don't do a lot to the pages. So those are the four that I've been working on. I will get those on my Etsy shop um, probably this weekend. And then I will finish up the denim journals and get those on as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying a nice sunny day wherever you are. Um, we're gonna have rain next week, so <laughs> we're enjoying the sunshine as much as we can. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'm hoping to do a tutorial on um, finding your own chipboard rather than buying bookboard for making some covers. Um, I thought I would try and make some smaller little travel size. This is the scrap of the watercolor paper that I cut off the bottoms of the pages when I was making the watercolor paper. And I think I'm just going to make some little booklets, some long travel art, art booklets. So these will be those and then I'm just going to use chipboard for the cover and make my own spines. So I'm going to show you how to find your own chipboard without having to scour around. So that'll be my next tutorial and I'll show you how to make these little travel books. So thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and we'll see you real soon. Bye now.